feedback, a quest for the cure, video four. Just gonna go through the comments, pick and choose ones that I think actually bring up some good points or good questions. A lot of the comments are just, you know, positive, which is a great thing. We need more of that in the community, especially with all the stuff that's been flying around lately. So yeah, I'll just get going instead of rambling on for a minute. I'll just get right at it. Midwest launch mob, my Gilbert is back. Mm, I was for a second. <laughs> Went on a hiatus again for four months almost. So try and be more consistent, but yeah, it's, it's, it's tough out there when there's a lot of things going on. So the truth, pal. <laughs> Looking better, pal. I was worried. Great tips. Got two thumbs up so other people agree with them. Bass Bruiser, I couldn't agree more with you about committing to one lake and figure it out. Based on those principles, I had my best big fish years of my life last year and the year before. Broke my PB twice and caught multiple giants. Well, that's good news, Bass Bruiser. I even wrote that in a comment four months ago. Ramon Pasqueta, my home waters is a river system. Everything you say will still apply, right? Question mark. Just started throwing big baits this winter. I haven't been able to get a bite. Just started throwing the battle shad. I'm going to commit to the big swim baits. Good information. Thanks, man. I don't know. I don't have any experience fishing river systems. So I don't know what to tell you, Ramon. Mike Kushmer, great stuff, man. I agree with you on the price of swim baits. It's ridiculous. Again, uh... The price of swim baits is all controlled by the consumers. So if the consumer is willing to pay it, then I don't know. It's like the free market system, supply and demand. Uh, I'm no expert, but I, it, it's pretty easy to see that guys are throwing an enormous amount of cash at baits. Sometimes that have never hit the water. You've never seen a fish caught on the bait and guys are throwing $400, $500 at them. It's mind blowing, but hey, it's their choice. Uh, Jeremiah, Gu uh, Jeremiah Giles, Gills, G-I-L-E-S. My pronunciation is probably way off, but I just bought my very first Depths 250 from Japan. It's an injection molded mass-produced lure priced at $200. I got it stupid cheap overseas and still paid $100. All right, Billy Larkin. I fished from the bank at my home reservoir, very shallow and lots of structure. I started realizing that only a few locations would produce fish, and ever since I eliminated other areas, I have a higher rate of success, bigger fish, and consistent bites. The process you're explaining is exactly what I did last year. I broke my PB three times in my same lake and caught plenty of nice fish for New Jersey. This spring, I plan on attacking the same body of water with the most successful tactics from last year as well as a few new ones. I agree, that's what you do. You start fine tuning and figuring out that lake. Don't waste your time in those areas that are dead zones. Kenny McFishing, pray, pray, pray. Please make part two, three, four, five, whatever. It's incredible that this is free and I'm grateful. I'm going to do this this year. I'll keep you posted on here and your Instagram. Trophy, cheers, beer mug. Fishing with Lucas, great video, Mike. A lot of useful information here. I have a really small lake near me that could, I could fish three days a week. It's heavily pressured, and the biggest fish I've seen there was probably a five-pounder. Do you think it would be worth putting my time in to try and figure out? Well, Lucas, I don't know any other information about the lake. It's just, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of factors. That's a, that's a really tough question to answer. Uh, yeah, I'll just, I don't know what to say to that. Creed Senko, I hope I'm saying it right, but Creed Sentco. Always super positive, always comments, just very appreciative of the work that guys put in. We appreciate that stuff. I mean, it's very nice when you see that somebody takes the time to actually write a thoughtful comment, not something that's disingenuous, that's trying to like be like a got you thing or a meaningless comment. Something that shows that you, you actually put thought into what you're writing. So Creed almost always does that. It's always good to see. Josh Licks, good question here because uh, there's a lot of variance to it. I'm just summarizing his question because the question is at the end. He, he has some um, positivities thrown my way, which is great, but I'm just going to go straight to the question. I'm curious about how you and other successful trophy hunters feel about moon phases, moon position throughout the day. 
I try and operate by certain things, and it, sometimes I think it's detrimental to my fishing. Uh, I am definitely a follower of the moon, but I don't let it control whether or not I'm going fishing. If you have a lake that uh, the, the bass behave how they should, it does get predictable when you start getting into like moon rises and moon sets, your bite windows around that moon rising and setting. Uh, same as sunrise, sunset. I hope that helps a little bit, Josh, but it, my mind starts just overthinking it as we're dis uh, as I'm discussing it right now. It's just, <laughs> can't even control my own thoughts on it because I just know there's so much more to it than just saying, yes, I got nothing. This is pure gold. I get so many people that see the arsenal of my tools and think that's the reason I catch big fish. This has to be the ex best explanation of time on the water is key to success. Nobody ever sees the stack of notebooks in the corner to realize I'm on the water seven days a week. But yeah, if you're fishing seven days a week, you have a lot of information you're absorbing. And if you're thinking, you can start piecing that all together. And that should mean you're going to be far more successful than a lot of other people. But that kind of puts it into this realm that I'm on. That I, I opposed to, but positioning my fishing or your fishing or whoever against other people's fishing. It's like, I think we're all out there if we're truly in it for the passion of catching giant bass. I'm there competing against myself and the fish and that body of water and nothing else. So it's kind of, maybe I don't like the way I phrased my answer, but uh, yeah. Miley and me van life. Do you pay attention to the barometer at all? I do, but not really. And the reason being is when I have my days to go fish, I go fish. I'll look at those moon phases. I'll look at the wind. I'll look at the air temp. When I get there, the first thing I do is I check the water temp because it can fluctuate rather quickly this past year. It jumped all over the place. I think my experience is related a lot to what applies to my fishing and maybe doesn't necessarily apply to guys in other parts of the country where fish behave a lot different. They behave more like the wild things they are. I'm just being realistic of like what, what I really pay attention to, and it's not the barometer. I can't let it sway. It's good to know after the fact so you can pattern things, but so far this past year, it did nothing for me. If I look back at all the times when I did catch big fish this year, I don't think there was any change in the barometer, which I think is actually good in our little aquariums here. Consistency leads to predictable behavior. Uh, even though a lot of guys look forward to that, that drop, that might throw those fish all out of whack. Maybe it fires them up or maybe they go, uh, and disappear. I don't know. Uh, I'm not totally sure. I'm not sold on it for our lakes here. Yeah, ugh. I don't know. Jason Fletcher, absolutely phenomenal. Your channel is the reason I got into swim bait fishing this year. You share insight, put out an amazing quality video, and you catch giants. Thanks for giving us all your insights. I will be taking the advice. Well, thank you, Jason. Always appreciate like positivity, support. I do put the content out for free. I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with putting things behind a paywall, but I like kind of the option of putting the content out there for free and giving you the choice like if you enjoy the content and you want to support the brand you can comment just by you commenting it expo exposes it to more people it gets through the recommendations of YouTube the activity on that video helps grow the brand and there's also the other option of hey I can slide over there I can buy a t-shirt I can buy a board to be more supportive it's all your choice to do that I don't want to hold content behind a paywall like for ransom in a sense even though other guys that do do that there's nothing wrong with that that's their choice to do so so and if their viewers feel like it's of value to them they'll continue to support so it's it's however somebody wants to deliver it but i appreciate your positivity and, and hit me back with it my wife and i we really do appreciate the support and i i can't say that enough it does mean a lot to us and we do our best we can to, to make customers happy, make the supporters happy, and just put out a consistent product and hopefully better video content in the future. Bassin Northwest 503. I've seen him on Instagram. 
He's been sticking some good ones this year up there. All right. I've heard you mention approaching a spot from different angles in a few different videos, and this is something that I have focused on lately. Would like to hear you elaborate on that at some point. Do you consider just the angle, or do you consider the combination of the angle, time of day, location of shadows, or lack thereof, etc.? Asking mostly because I personally have a tendency to complicate things when I start thinking about how far down the rabbit hole I could go in an effort to become a better angler. I hear you. And that's why it's hard sometimes for me to actually give good answers to questions because I do the exact same thing. I will just start spiraling out. But what I currently consider, and I have for, I don't know, a decent amount of time, it's, and I think it's kind of contrary, and like, I really enjoy letting the wind blow me into position. I feel like it's really stealthy. You don't get that sound lapping on the side of the boat. I know a lot of guys like to go into the wind and bring that bait with the way the wind's blowing. I definitely have some hesitation about fishing bait where it would place the fish looking directly into the sun. I do have issues with that, but not if there's plenty of cover that those fish can hide in shade pockets and see that bait going by in the bright sun and reach out and grab it. So there's a lot to go there, but wind blowing into a spot, my boat blowing me in, but not directly on top of the spot. I want that wind to blow me to the side so then I can cast across my spot. I want my bait in the strike zone as long as possible. So in my little tin can, it, it does get a little bit difficult sometimes. That wind takes its toll, but kind of just letting it flow in there. I've done that on a lot of lakes. You kind of got to start analyzing the consistent direction of the wind to understand how to set up on it. Sometimes it might take me five minutes to work into an area, but like you mentioned, it's a rabbit hole. You can go way down. You get into the stained water. Does the clarity of the water change throughout the day because the wind is picked up? There's a lot of things. Position is key, and in my mind, I'm doing my best job to have as little impact on the environment as I'm coming up to the spot. And so the wind really helps me get in there. I already know the cast I need to make, so I kind of let that wind just push me in there. Other things, guys might want to get back into anchoring too. I mean, dude, there's a lot of there's a lot of options and just wait them out. I've done that time and time again. Sometimes your boat position might need to be like you're almost beached on shore or your boat's all the way in the toolies and just the nose end of it sticking out. And you're presenting your bait on a spot that is unconventional to how other anglers hit it. That's another way I look at it too. Watch how all those guys are hitting it and then go and hit it from the opposite direction how they do while trying to be as stealthy as possible to get there. I'm glad you asked the question, Bassin Northwest 503. Seems like you've been having a great year. I think you've gotten a couple of PB, so keep on them. You're crushing it. Toxic Badger 2. Can we just get videos of you fishing, please? And just talking about your gear and boat, please. There are plenty of other channels out there that provide that content already. That content, I think, is a dime a dozen. Like, I'd, I'd, that's fine. I'm not hating on dudes that are doing it, but just watching me fishing, it gets kind of boring. How many times can you watch somebody catch a fish and then never explain much, which I'm not the greatest explainer when I'm actually catching the fish because I'm caught up in the moment. Like, how many times can you watch that and be excited? I don't know. At some point, you feel like you're kind of like, man, I, I want to get to know this person a little bit more. I kind of want to know what their thoughts are in a different setting. If you're desiring that type of content, and if you're in that much of a need of it, there are a lot of other channels that already provide that, that are great channels, and I'm sure they would love your views and comments. With that said, that's it. Like I've said before, we appreciate the support. If you'd like to support the brand further, go to our website. We have product there. If you just like watching the content, we love that too. If you haven't already, please subscribe. That helps a lot. 
makes the brand grow through the YouTube channel, reaches more eyes, bigger exposure, you get the deal. We'll do our best. We'll keep pushing stuff out. And until next time, I'm out.